Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I am back to do a new release Tuesday video. Today I'm talking about books that come out on Tuesday, March 5th. This is a big book release week so I have a number of books that I'm going to talk about in this video so I'm going to be just jumping right in and hopefully getting through this relatively quickly. <laughs> First up I have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Daisy is a girl coming of age in LA in the 1960s, sneaking into clubs on the Sunset Strip, sleeping with rock stars, and dreaming of singing at the Whiskey A Go-Go. The sex and drugs are thrilling but it's the rock and roll that she loves the most. By the time she's 20 her voice is getting noticed and she has the kind of heedless beauty that causes people to do reckless things. Also getting noticed is The Six, a band led by brooding Billy Dunn. On the eve of their first tour, his girlfriend finds out that she's pregnant. And with the pressure of impending fatherhood and fame, Billy goes a little wild on tour. Daisy and Billy end up crossing paths when a producer realizes that putting them together will be the secret to supercharged success. What happens next is the stuff of legends. So Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote the book The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which came out a couple of years ago and was a huge hit. I know a lot of people really really enjoyed that book and this one seems like it's kind of taking a similar-ish vibe where it's looking at the fake history of this famous in this case band in the other book it was an actress. This one I've heard is written in the form of an oral history which is really interesting as well. So if you have read Taylor Jenkins Reid's books in the past and you enjoyed say like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo then you can go ahead and pick up Daisy Jones and The Six today. Next I have our sponsor for this video and that is Almost Home by Valerie Fraser Lussie and this is published by Ravel Books. The things that tear us apart can also bring us together. With America's entrance into World War to the town of Blackberry Springs, Alabama has virtually exploded overnight. Workers from all over are heading south for jobs in one of Uncle Sam's plants and they're bringing their paths with them. Right into Dolly Chandler's grand but fading family home turned boarding house. A struggling young couple from the Midwest, unemployed professors from Chicago, a widower from Mississippi, and a shattered young veteran struggling to heal from the war are all headed to Tali's home hoping to find their way back to the lives they love behind. But the house has a past of its own. When tragedy strikes, Dolly's only hope will be the circle of friends who have gathered under one roof and their ability to discover the truth about what happened to a young bride who lived there a century before. And again, that's Almost Home by Valerie Fraser Lussie and thanks so much to Ravel Books for sponsoring this video. The next book that I have is A Woman Is No Man by Ataf Rum. Palestine 1990. 17-year-old Isra prefers reading books to entertaining young suitors her father has picked out for her. Over the course of a week, the young and dreamy girl finds herself betrothed and moving to Brooklyn. There, Isra struggles to adapt to the expectations of her mother-in-law and her strange new husband, Adam. A pressure that begins to intensify as Isra begins to have children four daughters instead of the son she's told she's supposed to bear. Brooklyn 2008. Daya, Isra's oldest daughter, must meet with potential husbands at her grandmother's insistence, though she just wants to go to college. Daya can't help but wonder if her options would have been different if her parents had survived the car crash that they got into when Daya was just eight. But her grandmother is firm on the matter. The only way to secure Daya's future is to match her with the right husband. But fate has a will of its own and soon Daya finds herself on a path that leads her to find shocking truths about her family. Knowledge that'll force her to question everything she thought she knew about her parents, her past, and her future. So this is a debut novel that explores things like culture and honor, secrets and betrayal, love and violence, and looks at this universal tale around family while also looking at the way that silence and shame can destroy people who we've sworn to protect. And again, that is called A Woman Is No Man. Next up coming out today is Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. Perdita Lee may appear to be your average British schoolgirl. Harriet Lee may just seem like a working mom trying to penetrate the school's social hierarchy, but there are signs that they may not be as normal as they seem. For example, there's the gingerbread 
that they make. Londoners may be able to take it or leave it, but it's very popular in Durastrana, the far away or possibly made up land from Harriet Lee's youth. The world's truest lover of Lee's gingerbread is Harriet's childhood friend Gretel, a figure who seemed to have a hand in everything good and bad that has happened in Harriet's life. Decades later, when teenage Perdita is out to find her mother's long lost friend, it prompts a new telling of Harriet's life. Helenoe Yami always does a really interesting and great job of exploring these common fairy tales and mythical ideas that we have in our Western society and putting her own little twist on them. So obviously this one is looking at things like gingerbread and the story of Hansel and Gretel and I know a lot of people are really looking forward to this one and again that is called Gingerbread by Helen Oyeyemi. The next book I have is Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. When Jack and Kate meet at a party, bonding until sunrise over their mutual love of Fruit Loops and their favorite films, Jack knows that he has fallen hard. Soon she's meeting his best friends Jillian and Franny and Kate wins them over just as quickly as she did Jack. But then Kate dies and their story should just end there. Yet Kate's death sends Jack back to the beginning, the moment that they first met, and Kate's there again. Healthy, happy, and as charming as ever, and Jack's not sure if he's losing his mind. Still, if he has a chance to protect Kate's death, he'll take it. However, Jack will soon learn that his actions have consequences, and when one choice turns deadly for someone else that he loves, he'll have to figure out what he's willing to do for the people that he loves. So this is a new young adult novel that has a really interesting, you know, sort of science fiction twist to it. Uh, this idea of like groundhog day almost and being able to save the person that you love but obviously realizing that there are consequences for the actions that you take. Sounds really really interesting. I know a couple of people who have read this one already and said that it's a really good and interesting book and it's been blurbed by a lot of great people like Angie Thomas and Becky Al Albertetti. Uh, so if you are someone who enjoys young adult contemporary romance stories and would it buy something with a little bit of a sci-fi twist, then you can pick up Opposite of Always by Justin Reynolds. The next book that I have is When I Hit You by Mina Kandasami. Seduced by politics, poetry, and the dream of building a better world together, the unnamed narrator falls in love with a professor. Moving with him to a rain-washed coastal town, she quickly learns that what for her is a bond of love, for him is a contract of ownership. As he sets out to reducing her to this idealized version of an obedient wife, bullying her and devouring her ambitions of becoming a writer, she attempts to push back a resistance that he resolves to break with violence and rape. So this is the chronicle of an abusive relationship and the immense power of art. And this book is a smart and fierce and courageous look at traditional marriages in India. This book was long listed or short listed for the Women's Prize last year and I've heard that this one is really, really harrowing, so obviously trigger warning for this one. But I've also heard that this is really brilliant and a great feminist discourse on abuse in relationships in a lot of different forms. So obviously this one will not be for everyone because you do have to have a little bit of a stronger stomach, I suppose, for this types of brutal honesty. And again, that's When I Hit You by Mina Kandasami. And the final book that I have this week is The Lady from the Black Lagoon by Mallory O'Neill. Mira. So as a teenager, Mallory O'Meara was delighted to find out that one of her favorite movies, Creatures from the Black Lagoon, had a monster designed by a woman named Millicent Patrick. But for someone who should have been hailed as a pioneer in the genre, there was very little information available for about her. And as O'Meara soon discovered, a lot of her contributions were actually attributed to a jealous male co-worker. Her career was then cut short and she was soon erased from film history. No one even knew if she was alive. As a young woman working in the horror film industry, Omira set out to right this wrong. And in the process, she discovered the full and fascinating history of a young woman ahead of her time. Patrick's contributions to special effects was just one chapter in her fascinating and remarkable life. From her youth growing up in the shadow of Hearst Castle to being one of the first animators at Disney. And finally, Omira found out what happened happened to Patrick after the the creature's success and where she went. So this is a nonfiction book looking at this female trailblazer who has mainly been forgotten 
over the course of time. And Omira is both looking at Patrick's personal history as well as looking at Hollywood's film industry and the culture that doesn't actually seem to have changed very much since. So if you are the type of person who enjoys these nonfiction books that are exploring these forgotten women of history, or if you are someone who is just a fan of Hollywood nonfiction books or anything along those lines, then you can pick up The Lady from the Black Lagoon today. So that is everything I have for this week. Let me know down below what books you are excited that are coming out today. Like I said at the top, there are a lot of really good books coming out and I couldn't mention them all. So I'd love to hear down in the comments below if you plan on picking up any of these or if there's anything else coming out today that you are excited about. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next Tuesday with another new release video. Bye.